From Paris, a special edition of Charlie Rose. Henri Cartier-Bresson is one of the century's icons of photography. He has transformed the art of photography with his uncanny sense of timing, his intuition in seizing the right moment, his sensitivity, and his sense of geometry. His photographs have given a meaning to the world they arrest. He is a marksman and a sharpshooter whose main tool is spontaneity. By the early 70s, he stopped making photographs and returned to painting and drawing. He gives few, if any, interviews these days. I had the extraordinary privilege to spend an afternoon with him in Paris recently, where he lived with his wife, photographer Martine Frank. This is, in this interview, this conversation, the portrait of an artist who refused to be a passive onlooker in a world which moves perpetually. We begin this hour with Richard Avedon, a friend of mine, and certainly one of the great photographers today. He has, in his own lifetime, known, admired, Henri Cartier-Bresson. Charlie, me. just before you say a word, he is the greatest photographer of the 20th century. He is like Tolstoy was to literature. He covered all the ground in a vast way, politically, socially, and the most personal and complex insight into the human personality. He's, go ahead. Well, he's, you say he's like Tolstoy. Yeah. Why? Well, he, he showed the moving of history, the movements of history. He was in China, he was in India, he was everywhere that marked the movement of the 20th century. I'm in awe of him, I'm absolutely in awe of him. Everybody's a Cartier-Bresson baby. They all have taken from him. He was a master what? of which everybody followed that's right. in photography. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the pictures go beyond any breaking down of what a picture is supposed to be or any intellectualizing about it. You, when you hear Bach, you know you're in the right place. And to have lived in the time of Cartier-Bresson yeah. is something in itself. Your friend and mine, Adam Gopnik, yeah. thinks he's one of the five great artists of the 20th century. Yeah, um, why not? Of course. Can you tell what, what, what made him great? I mean, or is it you look at it and you know, you see the greatness when you see it. I know when well, I, I mean, see there it. Are so, if, you, if you had a career that had five great photographs, that would be pretty good. Good. This is hundreds <laughs> of them. Charlie, he yes. never, he did many Five pictures. would be good. He yeah, has hundreds. Ten would be good. Nobody Who? has that track record. And, you know, I worship him. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up now, a conversation with one of the great photographers of all time. Many people say the best of his time, Henri Cartier-Bresson. You once said, I don't take the photograph, the photograph takes me. Yes. What did you mean? Sensitivity, it's, uh, intuition and sensitivity. I'm not wanting, you mustn't want, you must be a feel. See? Yes, and receptive. Composition for you. Geometry. Geometry. Are you born with that? A sense of geometry? It has to be cultivated. But you once said also about photography, nothing worth knowing can be taught. Yes. What's your opinion? I think that's probably true. On the other hand, there are things that uh -huh. you would expect of craftsmen. You can be teaching how to use a little finger, that's all. Just a little finger. Yeah. And, and to... No, we have fingers to, yeah. to be alive, and uh, I don't know. Was your photography influenced by your early interest in art? Well, photography is just an instant drawing. You have to guess and quick, quick. That's the advantage of photography. But you need one, and with drawing, you need three fingers. <laughs> and it's a meditation drawing. And photography is just shooting, bang. Yeah. I look around this room, and there are all these photographs of yours. They are magnificent and, and the most admired, not my opinion, everybody's opinion. You never hang your own photographs on your walls at your home? No, I don't. 
You never printed your own photographs. You would just send them away. Yes, print of mine prints. I don't know how to print it. It takes time. and I like shooting, that's all. Just shooting? Yes. What is it you like about it? I don't think of photography. I think of uh, what I see and, and the geometry. That means everything has to be composed properly. When, today it's you, because I started with drawing. And you returned to drawing. But I never quit drawing. The camera is a way of drawing. When you take the photograph, is there a moment for you that you know when to snap? When the subject uh, takes me. When the subject takes then you. I'm, uh, I'm receptive and I shoot. But uh, just to concentrate, to concentrate. Mm. In the silence. And you mustn't want. You must be receptive. Don't think even. The brain is uh, a bit dangerous. Sensitivity, the, the flavor of uh, up. It's true for drawing as well? Life in general. In general, <laughs> yes, yeah. it's very good. <laughs> it's philosophy of life, <laughs> is to mm, that's it. let it soak it up, yes. let it overwhelm you. Yeah. Before the war, were, were your intentions, were the way you photographed different than it was after the war when you became, created Magnum and became a photojournalist? All these are labels. Yeah. Doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. It's a relation with reality to be present, to be sensitive, and participate, receptive and participate. Did serialism affect you in your photography? I have no idea. I never thought of it. What did it mean to you when you were a young man and you were associating with the movement and young serialist? I don't know. You were very young at the time of... I don't know what young means. You're alive <laughs> or not. Yes. Wrinkles have nothing to do with it. Yeah, but if the brain is young. True. Sure. The heart is young. I'm an anarchist. An anarchist? Yes. In what way? Nonviolent. But an anarchist in what way? What is it you want to... If you look at I'd answer only in front of a police. <laughs> this life that you have lived, is it not a life of anarchy, is it? Anarchism is an ethic. It's a way of behaving. And so how have you behaved? I'll answer in front of a police only. <laughs> Something must have made you want to be a photographer. I don't consider myself a photographer. I'm, I'm using a camera, but everybody, there's f millions of photographers. It's what you see, it's the way you, for me, it's a... So you see yourself simply as an artist? I'm just a human being. Anybody sensitive is an artist. What's all this? Recently, I've had lots of conversations about where the world is. Tell me about this. Globalization, um, what it'll mean to Europe. Do you think about that? Does it bother you? Do you worry about where this world is going and how fast it's changing and, and whether something humane is being lost? Something of culture to be treasured is lost? This present society is crumbling to pieces. And fast. In what way? Tensions are bigger and bigger. The rich Big and, and poor. Rich and poor. And between rich countries and poor countries. And those with technology and not. And more, how do you call that? Mondialization is extremely dangerous. Because? Putting uh, the whole stuff in the movie next. Homogenation. <laughs> it, it's all homogenized. 
and anarchism is an ethic that you live by. Yes, an act as well. An act. Yes. Would you like the first line of your obituary to say what? He was an anarchist? Obituary will come in due time. <laughs> no rush. Yeah. When you look around here, though, it is your history. It is your history. Africa, you know, you went to Africa as a young man. Was it influential for you? Well, I called back out of fever. I know. And um, all my fortune was told already. By Max Jacobs' mother? Tarot. With tarot cards. We were tarot cards. Yeah. She said that you would marry an Asian woman. Mm -hmm. She said you would find uh, something you wanted to do well. What else did she say? When I'll be very old and marry somebody and I'll be very happy. That's exactly. <laughs> Martin, did you hear that? <laughs> it's, he, she said when you were no, old, no, you would marry no. someone. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it would make you very happy. Yes. What does that say? I mean, the prophecy was pretty clear and pretty accurate. Time doesn't count. It's all the, uh, all the problem of uh, the time is past. Time and space and... It's predetermined. Yeah. There is a story, though, <laughs> that you sent a letter to your grandfather because you thought you were dying, <laughs> and you said, I want to be buried in Normandy, and I want to listen to a Debussy string quartet. Yes, sir. The Debussy string quartet. <laughs> he said that comes too expensive. <laughs> Come back from that. And Come back. <laughs> it's too expensive to have a funeral that way. Well, yes, but uh, yeah. you pee black. That's an indication of the disease. Oh, yes. Yeah. Usually uh, you die after a few days. You thought you would die? I was unconscious. You, like many other young men and other young Frenchmen, set out to to see the world, and especially the colonialized world. India, Africa, Asia. Was that just the spirit of an anarchist? What was your motivation? To live. To live and learn. Yes. Of all these photographs, Camus, Gandhi, they signal to many people the work of one of the great artists of our century, you. That means something, it doesn't? No. About the, did you mention that picture of Gandhi? Yes. I gave him a book published by the Museum of Modern Art and there was a photograph of um, in front of a hearse. Yes. Rene. And then he said, what's this significant? And he said, but um, I told him it's a great French poet, preoccupied by the destiny of man and so on. Yeah. And he said, death, death, death. He closed a book and uh, Half an hour later, he was killed. What does that say? Something about the preciousness of life, don't you think? Yes. And uh, I was very lucky because uh, I had always on the hip pocket. Money? No, films. And uh, I had about five. Both, and I followed the funeral of Gandhi from yeah. then on. What makes a great photograph for you? Combination of uh, shape, with geometry, and uh, the thing that you can't uh, describe, which is uh, sensitivity or imagination. I don't know. And you can't teach it? No. 
you have any regrets, any regrets at all, about the life that you have lived? Regrets that uh, Shim and Kappa were killed too soon. Robert Kappa and David Shim. They were killed too soon. You got to know Kappa? Because we were, we were of the same age. And friends? No, uh, there was a unity, each one being very different from the other. Shim was a thinker, Kappa an adventurer. Hmm? Did Kappa help you form Magnum? No, it's Shim who had the idea. Of Magnum? Yes. He was a thinker. And Kappa an adventurer it was quite different. And you were? An artillo. <laughs> no, no. So the complete unity. Complete unity? Except that Kappa was taking our money. Yeah. <laughs> and Shim knew how to manage to make more money. <laughs> Kappa was a gambler, but he didn't always win on horses. Not always. <laughs> <laughs> but it had no importance. We didn't give a damn about all that. Yeah. Matisse, did you know him? You photographed him. A friend? Can't be a friend. I'm a young man. I was a young man. I knew Matisse, I knew Bernard, I knew Picasso, but Picasso wasn't a painter. At the beginning, yes, after he was manipulating everything. But Bernard, all his life long. Was a painter. And, oh, yes. And Matisse, the beginning and the end. You never cropped your photographs? No, never. None of crop. You would not allow it? It's a question of allowing. But the, if you shoot properly, well, it's there. <laughs> yes. You also never took a lot of photographs of the same scene. Not, never more than... No, there's no rule. It depends. Sometimes you shoot and you scrum. <laughs> like De Gaulle said. Yes. Yeah. No, because things change from second to second, so it's no longer the same thing. Why did you give up photography and start primarily drawing? I never stopped photography. My impression was that you were primarily drawing. I'm drawing, yes, but sometimes I have a camera. But it's a tool or another tool. Is that how you see the camera? Simply as a tool, like a brush? Yeah, exactly. Do you carry one with you all the time? Not today. Not today. You never know. I should. Pen? Oh, pencil, pencil. Pencil. What's been, for you, the best part of living? The best time? When I escaped from uh, prisoner. The third time. Twice they caught you. Yes. Uh, everything is interesting. But being in prison was awful. Yes. You escaped with what? With Claude Frank? Claude Lafont, yes. How did you escape? I'm thinking of, of all those who haven't been able to. I have been lucky. You think of those that didn't make it? Yes. Brava Ruska. That's where one was sent, and you couldn't escape from them. It was far away in Poland. To go down to where Rhine wasn't so far. It was a yes, it's far all that now. It's far? Mm -hmm. But it's powerful. No. We don't seem to be any more civilized as time passes. Bosnia. 
Kosovo, Srebrenica, the inhumanity of all the violence, the unnecessary death. Did the war change you? Well, it was obvious. Never in color. I like painting. In color? Yes, sir. But no photographs in color? No. This is your early work. Some of it on the walls here. It's Elie de Prado in Marseille in 1932. What do you see? It's perfectly composed. I don't know. This is the time you were in Mexico. Yes. Matisse liked it. I gave him a, a print. Why did he like it, do you know? I don't know, but it's properly composed. I mean, in the, I know when to shoot, that's all. You know when to shoot? Yes. If I had a camera. Right now. Yes. You would know. Here, yes, there, no. You have to give satisfaction to your eye. and <laughs> Satisfaction to your eye. Yes. That means, um, yes, and, and I know. It's very subtle, all this, and secret at the same time. It was what you were born to do, photography. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I do. This says it. This says it. This says it. You know? You found the right tool for you. Yes, but um, I, had, I had many fathers. Who? Kertes, uh, Walker Evans. Others? Especially Kertes. How was he a father? Just because of the quality of his work? Yes, quality of his work. Conversation, he didn't have any. Yeah. No, but the quality of his work, oof. Who else? Others? Shimon Kappa. Yeah, of course. Yes. You love to go to foreign countries and foreign cities and just walk around, just walk around. Capturing what? <laughs> if I knew, it, I wouldn't have done it. It's just curiosity? It's, no, it's living and looking and... It's a way of drawing. I had trouble Good. with my father about the dogs. It, it bothered your father? Yes, because I was washing it in the, in the bathroom. Yes. And my father said, but you have sisters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an early passport photograph of you. This? No, this one. Oh, it's uh, Gretchen Powell. Took it. Who? Hmm. She was a photographer. Uh, this is a steal from, from Le Benel. You, you, went to, you talked to him about working as an assistant. Yes, but he didn't need an assistant. Yeah. So then, what happened when you went to see Jean Renoir? He hired you. Yes. I was second assistant. You thought that you might like to be a filmmaker. No. Then why did you go to work for him? All the visual aspect of film I wasn't interested, but work for the dialogue. To find the right word. But we could do it only when we knew who would be uh, acting that role. It was wonderful in the morning to shoot for the afternoon, which was very expensive for the producer. But uh, 
the strength of the films of Jean, because it was done immediately. He was a passionate person, and if passion dropped, well, nothing left. You must feel, you must feel, that you have lived life to the fullest. Well, you have grabbed No complaints. No, no complaints. complaints. No. No. Oh, no. It's been complain, uh, none. My way of acting, I complain. <laughs> yes. You mentioned Jean Renoir. I beg your pardon? You mentioned Jean Renoir. You yes. went to work for him because he was a great man, because he was a great artist. A giant. A giant. So are you. Stop it. No, I'm not going to stop it. But why don't you accept that? I know better and ask my friends. I know. All of your friends would say the same thing. I'm an anarchist, fundamentally, and so it doesn't exist. What does being an anarchist have to do? Being an anarchist has to do with the fact that there are these that this is extraordinary work on the, these walls, which is a reflection, perhaps, of an anarchist, because you, you wanted to stir things up. You wanted to do something special. I plead guilty. Finish. <laughs> Not only that, I know this is embarrassing, but bear with me. You are a defining artist. If you take cubism, we know who the defining artists are, and so do you. Brock, Picasso, others, Cesar. But you, in terms of photographs, you are a defining artist, a founder. And it's just so much talk to you. It has no meaning to you. Trying to do better next time, that's all. How do you get better than this? This work goes back to the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, I don't know of anyone who's taking better photographs anywhere, nor does anyone else, than what I see on these walls. I take portraits now. For me, it's the most difficult. Why? Portraits. Because you have to pretend that you're not there, that you're not taking a, a new shoot. I enjoy very much taking portraits. You do? Yes, sir. And now I'm taking portraits of you without a camera. That's the trouble. <laughs> that you don't have a camera. Portrait, you like portraits because every face is different. Because it's very difficult. I'm, I wrote it somewhere. I'm sorry to repeat it, to put the camera between the skin and the shirt. It is very delicate. Because it's that's what taking a portrait. The camera here, between your sh shirt and your skin. Yeah. That's uh, looking at people and uh, guessing, guessing, guessing. I have to guess all the time, guessing. Guessing what? I don't know, but guess what's the significance of a face and uh, you don't like to be photographed. I don't care, really. You don't? But, uh, no, you don't care? It depends. Uh, it depends. There is a story that once at Oxford, when you were given an honorary degree, oh. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> I had the cap and gown. <laughs> uh, no, because of, it's embarrassing, all this. It is. And to be well known is, is very embarrassing. You're grateful, but... Uh, it's embarrassing. Sure. It gets in the way? For the anarchist, it is embarrassing. I can't let you get away with this. Def <laughs> <laughs> Define anarchist for me. Anarchism is an ethic. Well, what's the ethic? You can define an ethic. An attitude, a way of behaving, of acting, and uh, loving, finally. Finally about loving. Absolutely. <laughs> Mentally, spiritually, 
and uh, eventually physically. <laughs> but what is the attitude? What is it? What is the attitude that an anarchist has? Fulfilling a necessity toward oneself, toward uh, to avoid compromises. Compromises? Yes. And not be stiff either. It's a very thin margin. <laughs> no? No, yes, I agree with you. And living is very, especially in this society. Living is what? We're in a world collapsing. Can't go back. It will never be again the Paris of the 40s. No, something else. Something else. Perhaps something less. Keep on fighting. Ah, there is the anarchist. Keep on fighting. Fight until you die. Talk to me about these photographs, whatever you think. This one. You know what they were waiting for? No. A signal. That's a, um, a window, a curtain out of a window. That was a signal. During the resistance? During the war. Now it's a bank at the bistro. His nails were black. Giacometti. Giacometti, yeah. And he used to uh, take um, ham and tear it with his fingers, yeah. <laughs> eat it <laughs> like this, and the egg on top. Yeah. Yeah. And his fingers were always uh, full of uh, charcoal. Did you have to race ahead of him to get this photograph? I was waiting for him to, get in, to go into the cafe. I was waiting on the sidewalk him and then up I shot. It is said about you that cafes you enjoyed more than uh, than Comédie Francaise. That your theater for you was to go to the cafe. So many people of my generation. Yeah. Yes? Pierre Bonnard. Pierre Bonnard. Good painter. You like for me is a top, 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 top. Do you photograph him, say, Bonar, mm. because he's a friend, because he's an artist, because? No, I can't remember only one thing. What do you remember? He asked me, "Why did you shoot me then?" And I said. Why did you put a touch of yellow just a minute ago on this painting? <laughs> and he couldn't answer. <laughs> so it was. Yes. You made so your point. It's beyond uh, talking to people. Is that true? You had no answer why you shot him then, in the same way that he doesn't know why yes. you put yellow. Yes. Lucidity doesn't come with words all the time. Andre Matisse. I have stayed, I was staying quite a long time with him then in Vence. Who was the better painter for you, Matisse or Picasso? For your eye, for your heart. The early Picasso was a great painter. After, a uh, uh, draftsman all his life. Oh. The best. And sculptor. Because so, but at the beginning only was a great painter. After Matisse, Matisse, beginning and the end for me. It was very sweet in between, but um, not the. Uh, at the end, it was a great painter also, as well. Uh, obviously, but I'm not an art critic. That's my own feeling. That's what I'm asking. I'm interested. Uh, my in nourishment comes from them. Your nourishment for you as a human being. Yes. 
comes from looking at Matisse, looking at, uh, at Bonnard and uh, but how does it affect your work? Well, it goes through all the system. <laughs> Not the brains. I know. Thinking is very dangerous. It makes you more alive, and therefore, the more alive you are, the better you uh, can yes. receive mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. images mm -hmm. that you photograph. Yes? I have a friend called Ari Kahn, who's a wonderful draftsman. He made an analysis of the geometry here. <laughs> I had no idea, but uh, it's extremely rigorous. Yeah, rigorous. Yes, for a mathematician. That's why you can't crop. Yes. It has to be complete, and you see it up at the same time. Cropping is a, um, but I never crop. The more you look at this painting, the more interesting it is, this picture. Uh. It's not a very good picture. Because? Mm, there's a, uh, but uh, it's him. He's from the completion. What happened? He's, I don't remember. He's in a meditation of a, of a Buddha. You've been to Tibet? Have no. you? I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, to Kashmir. This looks like Pope Pius XII, is it? Yes. They were shouting, vive Dieu, vive Dieu, vive Dieu. Yeah. I had my camera like this, I couldn't move. People were so excited. Yeah. This was Paris, 1938. You always use a 50 millimeter camera, not a lot of lens, just Fif one. 50 millimeter, yes. I like it. Gandhi, we talked about that. Mm. Interesting face. Death, 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 death. When he looked at the, my book, about the funeral. Yes. How did you shoot that? On a pole. On a pole. And, excuse me. I think it's a friend of mine, of AP, that took a picture. But mm, there wasn't room for two. I gave him a camera, <laughs> and he shot it. So, so this is not you at all. This is your camera, but not. Huh? Yeah, I see. Has that happened often, or only once? I remember that time. Yeah. Tell me about this, Tokyo. That's a word, funeral, in Japanese. It's a death of a um, kabuki mm. actor. Same thing. And you mustn't know. You must be ready, aware, and boom. Giacometti. It's at the opening at um, his exhibition at my. And you know, that foot yes. is a foot which has been uh, squashed. A place pyramid. A girl yeah. couldn't drive very well and yeah. drove over his foot. He's a genius, Alberto. A genius. Ooh. Who else is in that category for you? Matisse. Matisse. Not Picasso. Not? As a draftman, yes. All his life. Mm -hmm. And a sculptor. And painter. And I don't know. Did you know Camus well? 
No. No. I respect him very much. Ah, bullfighter. Yeah. I was living uh, in front of the whole house. You were? Yes, yeah, so I knew them. She was a madame, the maid, and it was an homosexual uh, who was making his living. Yes. Kappa is the photographer you admire the most? As a photographer, uh, adventurer, yes. As a close friend, photographer. He wasn't very... No, it's a man. It's an adventurer. Did you share the same love of adventure? Shim Kapanai? Yes. Yes, solidarity. Except that uh, I did film, documentary film of the Spanish War. The return. Yes. Yeah. And um, I should have remained photographer and not making films. It takes such a lot of time to make a film, to edit it. And uh, when we finished editing the film, the Spanish War was over. I wonder, when I look at this and everything you've done, what kind of filmmaker would you have been? Maybe you would have taken... How's a filmmaker? Why? I don't like directing people. Oh. Do this, do that. If you're anarchist, you don't say do this, do that. Yeah, yeah. This? Nice composition. Well, maybe... No, no, no. <laughs> I won't give you scissors. <laughs> Go and shoot yourself. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Remember? Yes, very well. What do you remember? That the, it was no, no man's land. The Kuomintang was outside, the communists were there, and uh, nobody in between, except this eunuch. Yeah. And the communists drove in a few hours later. This is a great, it's just wonderful. I'm alive on account of uh, Colonel Guillermoz. Why, well, how? because I didn't uh, obey to Life magazine. He wanted to me to go on the Amethyst, because I knew the Amethyst had been to Hong yeah. Kong. It was an aviso, British aviso. And Life magazine said, well, since you know them, uh, you're going to be on the Amethyst, and you're going to shoot the um, communist landing on the other side. And Colonel Guillermas of the Deuxième Bureau said, I don't advise you. And the Amethyst was sunk. <laughs> it's sunk? Sunk. Mm. So you yes. wouldn't be alive. I wouldn't be here. Mm. And it's strange because my fortune was told until my death, and that was included. Oh, that was included? Yes, sir. In the fortune? Yes. That you would die? In that uh, I might. That you would escape death. You mean. Mm -hmm. But it's um, all the questions of present, past, and future. But you don't believe in that, do you? This prophecy? You don't believe in God? For me, anarchism is an ethic. Ethic is important. Mm -hmm. Genet, what can we say? We can't say it out loud. <laughs> Oh, we can. Excuse me. Uh, we were at uh, oh, Batisserie. How do you call it? The floor. Oh, no, 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 no. Looking at all the delicacies of a, of a grocery. Yeah, right. Wonderful grocery. Come on. Pochon. Pochon. Yeah. Excuse me, may I say it out loud? Yes. Yes. Quel tonne de merde les Parisiens doivent faire tous les jours. <laughs> Tons of shit. 
I mean, this must be doing it. <laughs> what was your name? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it was wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you met, we talk about surrealism. Here is Andre Breton. Pope. Pope, the Pope, pope. of surrealism. Yes, yes. Look at the um, shadows. He had beautiful um, sculptures. Ah. That's her maid. She lived in the Palais Royal. Did you know her well? No. No. Do you like photographing artists? I don't think. Uh, I, I don't think I'm a photographer. I've got a camera and uh, we're drinking and eating and uh, I just have a camera and uh, sometimes I use it. And, Conversation about women. His mother was a prostitute. Ah. Lucian hmm? Freud. <laughs> no it's comment. I'm not an art critic. No, I know. But I like his drawings very much. You but really the nudes are grotesque. No, not sensuous. Not uh, yeah. most people don't know. I guess your family was the famous Cartier-Bresson textile family. Oh yeah, nineteenth century. It was very good business, and it fell down. Were you strongly influenced by your father? He loved painting. And hunting. Did you like hunting? I made a living hunting in Africa. I made lots of money. And I bought, when I came back to Europe, I bought, what's it called, that English money. Pounds? Pounds, yes. And the pound dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I lost everything. <laughs> ah. Samuel Beckett. These photographs, how do they come into being? Do they ask to be photographed? Do you ask them? No. Do you do it for a book? Do you do it for an exhibition? No. Why do you do it? I don't know. I shoot, that's all. You shoot because it's what you do? Because it's quicker than drawing. And you don't ask permission or anything. What's drawing, sitting, takes time, you have to think. And uh, mm. Now I do news. Drawing? Yes. Hands and feet are difficult. Curves, it, it works. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I'm sure. I think everything you say is true. From its perfection of shape and everything. Water. That gave me the idea of taking uh, photographs. The rhythm, everything, everything. Hmm. Yes. That's amazing. It, 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 it said to you what? I don't have to draw, I can take pictures. Yes. Perfection. Mm. Yes or no? <laughs> That's right. Yes or no? <laughs> and here? We went down and drank all together afterwards. <laughs> no, I heard noise. Yeah. I yeah. opened the, the door, I saw that. And Are they making love? I didn't ask him, <laughs> uh, but it was beautiful, the sensuality. Yeah, uh, I was living in Calle Guado. Caskets? They were making, and I heard all the time the doing 
the little uh, coffins. What happens? You're walking in Mexico, in the streets of Mexico. You have your camera in your pocket. And not something, in your pocket. Not in your pocket. On your wrist. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have the camera on your wrist. Something happens. You decide to... A few minutes ago, you look at the face of someone. It says something to you. Just now, I no full now, but a minute ago, there, 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 up, I would have shot. It's geometry and everything in the right place. Picasso could draw. We give him that. What do you have? What is it? Well, I'm visual. Other people um, is the air and music, and that's all. I don't know. Are you as good today as you have ever been? Who cares? Who cares? Do you care? You are so much in the moment. You think about today and tomorrow. Part of you doesn't look back much. Everything, it's a fraction of a second. It should be pleasant and yeah, to be sensitive present. and receptive. Of all the places you have been, is there one that holds a special place in your heart, other than Paris and France? Far East. Far East. Is and I'm um, grateful to America, because if I'm known as a photographer, it's a count of uh, Lincoln Kirstein, yeah. Monroe Wheeler. This has been a wonderful time. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. May you live a long and happy life. Until when? Until whenever. <laughs> uh, we are with Henri Cartier-Bresson in Paris at a new exhibition. Um, a remarkable experience to be here. Don't exaggerate. <laughs> Thank you for joining we enjoyed us. We enjoyed talking together. Yes, we did, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time. Oh, Mexico. Ah. <laughs> Salud. 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 <laughs> Where's yours? No, I don't know. I wish it was here. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> ah. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Better. Better. I mentioned. Maintenant, ça va mieux. More, more. Um, no, it's looser. It's looser and better. Yes. <laughs>